Hello everyone, this is Miss Lindsay. Today we're going to talk about section 11.4, areas of kites and related figures. So let's look at our area formula sheet and fill that in. We're going to start on the right hand side here with area of a kite. Area of a kite on this one is where we would do one half d1 times d2. And our d1 and d2 stand for our diagonals. Remember in a kite, we have consecutive, two pairs of consecutive sides are congruent. The diagonals are not congruent, um, but the area of the formula there would be 1 half d1 d2. Moving over to a rhombus, now a rhombus is a special kite. So the same formula, 1 half d1 d2, would apply for a rhombus. So that would equal one area formula. But we also know that a rhombus is a parallelogram. So base times height would also work. So again, the base and the height being a perpendicular to that base. So let's try a few examples dealing with a kite and a rhombus. First one, find the area of a rhombus if its diagonals are 30 and 40. Well, again, we know two formulas for this. One of them is d1, d2, 1 half d1, d2. So we can simply just do 1 half 30 times 40, which would give us 600 units squared. Okay. Taking a look at our second example, we want to find the area of the kite. And again, on the kite, it's 1 half d1 d2. Well, we definitely know we have the longer diagonal here, 2 and 6, so that's 8. We've got to think back to our properties here of a kite. We do know that one diagonal bisects another one, and that is um, the 3 there, so our second diagonal would be 6, which would give us 24 units squared on that. So 1 half d1 d2. <coughs> Third example, a rhombus has a perimeter of 52 and a diagonal of 24. We want to find the area and the height of the rhombus. Okay, a rhombus has a perimeter of 52 and a diagonal of 24. So let's go ahead and draw this rhombus and see what information we can use here. So since we know the perimeter is 52, if we divide that by 4, we'll get each side to be 13. So we know all the sides are 13. What else do we know? Well, we know one of the diagonals is 24. Again, in a rhombus, we got to think back to all of our properties here. We know diagonals bisect each other. So we know one diagonal would be split into 12 and 12, and they're also perpendicular. So we now have one of the diagonals. Can we find the other diagonals? Because we use 1 half d1, d2. So in this case here, we have a 5, 12, 13. It's a triple. And again, we know that those are all congruent, 5, 12, 13. So we can go area is 1 half. The one diagonal is 10. The second diagonal is 24, which gives us an area of 120 units squared. So that's part one. Part two says find the height. All right, well, let's just redraw this. I'm going to have a different color. It's not the best looking rhombus. Let me try that again. We know each side is 13. We are now looking for the height. Hmm. Well, take a look back at your formula sheet. We know area is 1 half d1 d2, which we used previously to find the area of 120. But we also know the area is equal to base times height for a rhombus. Well, we know the area from our work above is 120. We know the base, because all the sides are 13, 
go in reverse, solve for h. So if we take 120, divide by 13, we'll just leave that as a fraction. So we get our height to be 120 over 13. Okay, so remember when you're dealing with a rhombus, you have two formulas that you can use to find the area and to go back and forth between finding the heights and the diagonals as well. Fourth example, find the measure of the side if a rhombus has a diagonal of 48 and has an area of 768. We want to find the measure of the side. So let me go ahead and draw another rhombus and mark what we know. We have a diagonal is 48. And again, from our properties, we know that would make 24 and 24. It would bisect one of the diagonals. We have the area of 768. We want to find the side. All right. Well, we have area equals base times height. We don't know the height. We don't know the base. Or we could use area equals 1 half d1 d2. We know the area is 768. We know one of the diagonals is 48. Let's see if we can find the other one. So we have 768 equals 24 d2. So the second diagonal would be equivalent to 32. And from there, we could split that into 16 and 16. We know we have a right triangle there to find the side x. So using our Pythagorean theorem, 24 squared plus 16 squared equals x squared. We get 832 equals x squared. Square root both sides. So simplify that. x would be equal to 8 square root 13 for our side measure. And our last example, a rhombus has a 120 degree angle and its longer diagonal is 10 inches long. Find the area. Again, draw your rhombus. We know one angle is 120 degrees. Well, from this diagram, we definitely know that would be the larger, the obtuse angle there. And if we go ahead and draw in our diagonals, we know diagonals bisect the angles, so we would have a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle in there. We also know its longer diagonal is 10. Well, the longer diagonal is definitely going to be the one that's stretched, the vertices that are stretched. So what I'm highlighting there in black, we would know that would be bisected into 5 and 5. And again, we have a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle with our ratios of x, x root 3, and 2x. So 5 would be equal to x root 3. Divide by that root 3 and rationalize. So we get 5 root 3 over 3 equals x. Let's go back and read the question here. What are we actually looking for? Well, it says find the area. We know x is 5 root 3 over 3, so that gives us actually our second diagonal. This would be 5 root 3 over 3, 5 root 3 over 3, because diagonals bisect each other. Area would be 1 half. The first diagonal, which was given to us, is 10. The second diagonal is we got to add 5 root 3 over 3 plus 5 root 3 over 3, which would give us 10 root 3 over 3, and go ahead and simplify, which will give us 50 root 3 over 3 inches squared. Okay, so the key to this section is, yes, there's several different ways to find, there's two different ways to find area of a rhombus. Base times height, 1 half d1, d2. Using the given information, you want to decide which one, which route to go. And again, because we knew 
one of the diagonals here, we were able to find out the second one, so we knew we wanted to use one half d1, d2. Okay, this concludes section 11.4, dealing with areas of kites and related figures.